Hello, Ilian here. In this video, we're going to take a look at what's available if you're an administrator of a Mesh Central server. We're going to take a look at the My Server tab and a few of the options that are available there. So if you're managing your own Mesh Central server, there's a whole bunch of benefits that you can um, get by having a bunch of other features that are not available to normal users. So let's take a look at some of those. So I have on my screen here the, my trusty uh, developer instance of Mesh Central. This is running locally on my machine, and you can see it on the left here. I just run it manually. And on the right, you have the web page with a bunch of machines connected to it. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's two new tabs that are available only to administrators of Mesh Central servers. The first one is My Users, and it, it is the list of all the users you have and, um, and their status. If There's a little uh, check, green check if they have verified their email address. There's the email address right there. There's also the little key uh, for second factor authentication if they've set that up, and a little phone if they've set up SMS. That's, of course, only if your server has SMS set up. And then you have, um, you'll notice that the, or the users are ordered alphabetically, but the online users are at the top. So if you have a, a bunch of online users, they'll, they'll all show up on the top here. You can create new accounts here. You can filter. You can type a broadcast message, like hello, and all the uh, users that are currently online will receive this message and they can dismiss it. You can also export and import uh, user accounts. So if you wanna create a lot of users uh, you know, quickly. You can also take any user and grant or deny server permissions. So for example, if you wanna remove this user from being uh, an administrator, or if you wanna you know, give them administrator rights again, it's this one here. There it goes, or remove it, there it goes. And, or you can give them like specific um, uh, server rights. One of the things that's very useful is lock account. You click on that and their account is now locked so they won't be able to log in, they'll, they'll see the account is locked and then you can unlock it right there. But there's a whole bunch of other options you, you can see. The other one, um, the other tab you can see here is groups tab. This allows you to create uh, user groups. So I can create a new user group there. I can also duplicate an existing group. If you have a bunch of users and you just wanna start from that group, you can select one of them and, uh, and basically duplicate the, the existing group. And then recordings. This is only if your server is set up to record remote desktop terminal uh, uh, sessions, then every time the, the sessions end, the recording will be added here, so you can audit what your users are doing on uh, remote machines. Um, so that's fairly useful. Now, in addition to this, uh, by the way, I want to mention here that there's a blue dev test here, or customer one. This is because I've set up my administrator account to be cross-domain administrator. So there's a special flag you can put in the configuration for that. And so what you see here is not only the users for your own domain in Mesh Central, but for all the other domains. Now, multi-domain instances of Mesh Central will be a topic for another video, but this is why I have these blue tags on here. Normally, they would not show up, and you would only see users in the same do domain that you're logged into. Okay, then there's the other tab, which is the My Server tab. And this are, these are things that are global to the entire server. So for example, you can check the server version. And here I'm currently running on 0 0.8.1. And this is the latest stable one. This is the, the latest one. And I can select the version I want and I can click OK, and it will take about 10 seconds for the server to pull the new version, update, and, uh, and start up again. So it's very, very quick. Also, server error log. This, is, of course, if you're a developer, 
Um, I generate a lot of these, so I have to clear this log. But basically, any time the server would crash, the, the, log, um, the log is collected, saved into the mesh errors.txt file that is in mesh central data, and then, um, and then also displayed here. So I can clear it here, or I can save it, uh, download the, the, the log and save it. This is especially useful if you're getting an error like that to send it on GitHub so that we can go and investigate what's going on. Of course, if you're a developer, uh, I generate errors like that all the time and I have to go fix them. So uh, not unusual for me. The uh, CPU load, the amount of memory you have, and then you have server stats. These stats are polled every 10 to 15 seconds. So I have the number of agents uh, connected, number of users. Of course, I'm the only user, but if I duplicate this tab, then you'll see that after a little while, the number of user sessions should go up to two, and you see it two here. The number of connected users is one, but there's uh, obviously two sessions because I have two uh, screens open. Also, if I go to a computer and remote desktop into it, like here, then you can take a look. I don't know what I have there. I'll just close it. So anyway, so as... Uh, uh, I really want to close this. There it goes. And do not send data. Okay, well, anyway. So uh, as I'm doing this session here, you'll see that, you, um, that relay sessions is two, relay count is one. The re reason why there's two relay sessions is because the mesh agent and the browsers are both generating um, one session. So, the, uh, so you have two, but in reality, they're plugged together, so you have one relay. Anyway, if you disconnect, after a little while here, this should go back to zero and this should go back to zero. There it is. So you should normally expect the relay count to be half the number of relay sessions. And yeah, that's pretty normal. Okay, so that's the statistics here. Uh, in addition, I don't have anything here, but there's, if there, you have any warnings that there's any issues with the server, they will display in red underneath here. The second one is the, the stats. I'm going to close this. So this is a, uh, basically a, a time series that's saved in the database. And you can look, for example, over the last 30 days, or over the last day, or over the last three hours for data. Now, one thing you'll notice, uh, especially if you get more data, uh, obviously this is a test server, developer server for me. So you know the data is kind of all over the place. But as you go into production servers, this should be nice smooth curves. And uh, as you'll, you may notice, the, the amount of data sampling is higher towards the right of the chart and lower towards the left. And this is on purpose. So what happens is that as we save data into MongoDB or in a database, there's a certain expiry time for each of the little dots. And so some dots will expire early and some dots will expire up to 30 days away. So, so if you see a chart with more dots uh, on the right side, that's totally normal. That's uh, how it's built. And so you can see the number of connections. Now, very often the number of agents will dwarf the number of uh, users or user sessions or relay sessions that users have. So there's an X log here. And so it puts a logarithmic scale and so it, it really allows you to f see more clearly the smaller values and less clearly the, the values that are very large on a chart. So that's useful for that. Um, you can also take a look at memory use and uh, you know same over eight hours or over a week or over the last 30 days. Memory use, heap use, and so on. So this, this should be fairly... Um, you know, constant. If it goes up and up, then there's a bit of a problem with a memory leak on the server. So that is that. Now, the other thing that's super important is the console. So this is, you can type help here. These are commands that the server uh, accepts. Now, instead of building UI, you know, with dialog boxes and buttons and everything for everything, there are some commands that you just want to basically go to the console and just type commands to the server and see what's going on. So for example, you can type agent stats, agent stats, 
and you get a bunch of statistics about agents, when they've been connected, how many are stable, and so on. So you can also do, I believe, there's, uh, there's uh, some server stats. like uh, Well, there's also info. There it goes. And that gives you information about your server. For example, what version of the server you're running, what node version you're running, uh, what database you're running, and so on. So that's useful. Um, yeah, for example, there's an SMS command that allows you to type a phone number a message if you have SMS enabled. There's an email command that allows you to basically test uh, if email works. So th these are great testing things if you just set up SMS and you want to make sure that Mesh Central uh, can SMS correctly, everything's working. This is a great way to do it. Same for email. There's, um, there's one called Task Limiter. And this is a little bit bizarre, but it, um, the idea is that if there's a lot of tasks to be done by the server, for example, you have you know, 10,000 agents connected to your server, and you just updated, the server has 10,000 agents that in, they need to update, or there's some, or may, maybe the mesh core on, on the JavaScript needs to be updated. Well, the problem is you don't want the server updating all the agents simultaneously. You want the agent, the server, to kind of spread out the updates over uh, some sequence of time. So here you see that mass, max tasks is 50. That means that it will um, it will do at most 50 tasks at once. And so, it, and once one of those tasks is done, it will take a, a new one. And uh, there's also a 20 second timeout. So if a task gets stuck for more than 20 seconds, the server will, will keep moving on. But, um, and there's also a priority queue, high, medium, low. So some tasks are higher priority and it should be done first and so on. So th this is a feature in, the, in Mesh Central that basically allows um, spreading out of, uh, of tasks over time. So they, they're not like, you know, bogging down the server all at once. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of other things here. I'm not going to go through this, like user sessions. This uh, displays all the users and how many sessions, uh, what sessions they have, what IP address and uh, their se session identifier. So of course, if I duplicate this and I have a second session, then when I run, then you see this user has now two sessions, and those are the session identifiers and so on. So uh, I won't go through this, but basically this allows you to just have a good idea of what's going on and, and debug stuff. It's especially used for uh, developers. The last thing I, I want to show is tracing. This is also used for debugging and developers. So you can click, for example, tracing, and there's lots of different categories here. I'm going to pick the one that's... Uh, that's the you know easiest web server re uh, requests. I'm going to click OK on that. And so every time the server, the HTTP web server on Mesh Central gets a request, it will display something. So here, what I'm going to do is just hit the refresh on the page, and you can see everything that's being requested is uh, is displayed in real time. And you can do a whole bunch of interesting things here, like. If you want to debug um, certificates or mesh agent traffic or peering, now uh, in T stuff, uh, for example, HTTP server uh, headers. So I can click OK here. And then when you click, you can see the, the HTTP header of each request. So that's like super useful, especially for debugger, for uh, developers. You can keep the last you know, 100 to 1,000 different things. You can clear it. And of course, you can also uh, download the entire trace as a comma-separated value file. So super useful for uh, debugging and figuring out what's going on with the server. So anyway, this was a quick video of how to, um, how to access all these features that are in the My Users and My Server tab and uh, hopefully it will help you debug or see what's going on with your server in the future. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.